Well, the sun's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Hi folks, we are off on another adventure and we're at this time we're taking the weekend. Um, long weekend. Yeah, we're taking a long weekend, two nights off. We're heading down to Stanthorpe and Tenterfield. And uh, in between. And yeah, and a whole lot of places in between. And Charchi had me up at Sparrow Fart this morning. <laughs> Fruit of hours. And it got you up at about 4.30. Oh, no. You... <laughs> <laughs> he was awake at 12.30, like half past midnight. <laughs> well, and I woke up and on his I phone. couldn't go back to sleep, so and I was excited. Yeah. It's very dark. Sorry about the, um, the footage, but it still is early. <laughs> She can't handle that. No, no. <laughs> I do like my bed in the mornings. But anyway, yeah, we're heading down to our first stop is going to be Thunderbolts Hideout. Hideout, yeah. That's yeah, it. so yeah. that's that's going to be really cool. I'm looking forward to seeing that. So anyway, so uh, yeah, we'll get back to you. We will. Ciao for now. See ya. to Thunderbolt's hideout, we came across this interesting sculpture on the side of Mount Lindsay Road and we just had to stop and take a look. It seems to be in the middle of nowhere. I wasn't able to find any information about who made it, but it does appear to mark the beginning of a bike trail at Ball Rock National Park. I can only assume that it's a collaborative creation by the many people who pass by here. Further down the road, we made another stop. These tank traps were built during World War II as a defence position along the only all-weather road from Sydney to Brisbane at Thunderbolts Gully. During the war, there were up to 10,000 troops stationed in and around Tenterfield and they trained at the London Bridge Army Camp. The location of the traps was chosen as the area on either side of the road was not easy to bypass. Therefore, the anticipated Japanese tanks would have to try to navigate through here. The wooden posts seen here were designed to force the enemy tanks to rise up and expose their vulnerable undercarriage for the troops to shoot. Fortunately, an invasion never took place, and I guess we'll never know if the traps worked or not. Frederick Wordsworth Ward, aka Captain Thunderbolt, is pictured here after an autopsy. He gained his nickname when, during a robbery, he burst through a door like a thunderbolt, according to his victim. After he was arrested for horse stealing, he was sentenced to Cockatoo Island in Sydney Harbour. He escaped and swam to shore and headed north where for six and a half years he robbed mailmen, travellers, inns, stores and stations from the Hunter Valley up to Queensland. There's no evidence that he actually shot anyone and there's an interesting tale that he once held up a band of German musicians. He made them play for him and he returned some of their money to them. He was shot and killed by an off-duty policeman at Kentucky Creek near Urella in 1870.
Captain Thunderbolt hideout. Wow. Pretty cool. Well, it's actually not a bad place to hide. You can really see why this area was so appealing as a hideout. It's fairly close to the road so he could see the people coming. Plus there are so many exits that he could escape from. We stumbled upon this carving on a boulder in the hideout. It doesn't look recent and I haven't been able to find any information out about it. If anyone knows anything, please let us know in the comments. Apparently the largest cork tree in Australia, brought from England by Edward Parker and planted in 1861. And I'll tell you, it's bloody big. It's massive. Fortune favours those who see more in me than just a tree. Look at my cork and three times walk before my girth for all to see. Cork trees are also known as wishing trees. Back in 1665, during the Great Plague of London, people used to travel from all over England to walk around the trees three times and make a wish. This tree, however, is fenced off on private property, so we couldn't walk around it. We did wish for next week's lotto numbers, so we'll let you know. A trip to Tenterfield wouldn't be complete without a visit to the Sir Henry Parks Memorial School of Arts. It was on this site that Sir Henry Parks delivered a speech in 1889 called the Tenterfield Oration. He proposed that the six separate British colonies in Australia should unite into a single federation. This led to the formation of the Commonwealth of Australia 12 years later. And the reason behind it was to have a united defence of the Australian continent. Sir Henry Parks was then known as the Father of Federation and he features on the front of our $5 note. The building today is heritage listed and houses a museum, theatre, cinema, community centre and a library. Thanks for watching folks. Join us next week when we check out the Tenderfield Saddler, the Railway Museum, the Groove and Grill Cafe, and then we head into Stanthorpe. Ciao for now.